Good morning, folks. Today we've got to look at the sunspot cycle, the oldest living creature, cosmology, stellar outbursts, and Earth electrodynamics. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was calm. We have sunspots, but they are a shade below development, able to produce flaring. Filaments are mostly inactive, but we'd been expecting the coronal hole stream to arrive, and it did. Small density shock followed by a rise in the plasma speed, purple, as the coronal hole stream enhancement. This was a weak stream, they've mostly been weak so far this cycle, and it did not produce more than momentary instabilities in Earth's magnetic field. So with all the coronal holes being weak so far this cycle, and with the sunspots building up and just not quite able to flare yet, it's patience that's required. Despite the development of the sunspot groups, we're still very early in the cycle. We're actually ahead of cycle predictions by all accounts. This feels like 2010 and 2011 all over again. Signs of sunspots, but just not quite enough gusto to get there. Solar activity is expected to increase up to five or six times the current levels of sunspot and space weather production over the next few years. Up next, quick look back in time at multicellular animals that were frozen in the last glacial maximum 24,000 years ago. Then it looked back at us. They revived it, and while it is not the oldest species ever revived, it's close, and it's an amazing advance for these multicellular creatures to have survived. I hope no veteran observer forgot the bombshell about dark energy from about a month ago. Magnetism can be shifted into that position and nothing changes at all. Well, there's more bad news today as you might not even need magnetism. Dark energy may be entirely an artifact of the data analysis, especially with the anisotropic expansion discovery in the cosmos. It was one of the top three articles in any subject in all of 2020. Folks, dark energy is now right behind dark matter, sprinting for a fast closing door. Today would be a good day to go back and watch our cosmology movie, Plasma Cosmology. And if you think astrophysics and galaxies and the entire cosmos can't be fun, hi, welcome to my channel. Not only is it directly tied to solar forcing, climate change, the catastrophe and electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes, but a retired U.S. government scientist got permission to declassify material in our movie. And it's amazing. Up next, we're getting a broadened view of those recurring nova events we mentioned yesterday. They get all kinds of names. Cepheids, cataclysmic variables, luminous blues and luminous reds, wolf ray at stars and their dust-making events. Dust-making events. As wonderful a name as the stellar mass loss events they say happen at other stars. All names for recurrent nova at the end of the day, just with a different haircut. This one has a short recurrence period of a few decades. Folks, we often describe the global electric circuit down in high pressure, up in lows, as it relates to both pre-seismic electromagnetism and solar forcing of the terrestrial atmosphere. But the electrodynamic situation of our planet is far more complex than that. While we can easily notice A, then B, then C in terms of what happens and what happens next, the actual mechanisms are often elusive. Today, we learned that auroral processes no longer wish to hide. Alpha waves triggered by enhanced solar activity and geomagnetic impact excite electrons along the waveform, accelerate them, and they often escape. Not unlike how a surfer fears not the slowdown on the turn up the wave, knowing the acceleration to come on the way down, and the ability to outpace the whole wave, if desired. Same thing here. The electrons outpace the wave and are accelerated down from the ionosphere into the auroral zone. Now, given the weakening magnetic field of Earth and the dazzlingly obvious display of the auroras, it might be good to brush up on what's supposed to be seen at your latitude, just in case you see a bit more as we keep climbing that mountain as the field takes a snooze. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.